All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you guys for, for jumping on so that we can go over um, the information kind of summarized from the last meeting. Um, we will start to uh, night with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So, and I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. And our first order of business, did you guys have a chance to look at the minutes? Did you all get them? Yes. Good. And then does anyone have any questions or concerns about the minutes? No. Is there a motion to approve? Okay, Michael. And then is there a second? Okay, President Yoho with the second. All right, all in favor? Say aye. Oh, there's Janet. We, uh, we're looking at the mean and meeting minutes. Um, Ms. Beagle, did you have any questions or concerns about them? Nope, all good. Okay. Oh, and there's Alex. Yay. All right. Um, so, okay. So then uh, minutes pass. And we are now going to, did everyone, was everyone? Hi, sorry. I do have a question, but I couldn't get my mic on because I'm driving. Oh, of course, Senator. What's, what's the question? Um, there is a sentence towards the bottom of the minute about virtual programs, and it didn't make sense to me. Okay. Yeah, I think we were going to clarify that we were talking about um, 610 and the RVP program um, and how to, like, flexibly use our school systems and kind of look at things like that. It went along with the dual enrollment discussion. So, okay, yes, this, Kier, Kier this, was going to clarify that. So, Okay, because the sentence said something about it passing, and I didn't, it wasn't clear what it was referring to. I think was, she was it 610 or, yes. or something new? No, it was 610. Okay. It was the passage of 610. Yes, ma'am. All right, that was my only concern with the minutes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, were you all able to get the draft recommendations? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Paul, are you able to? Oh, the, and Senator also is here. Senator Fulton is now here. Um, there he is. Um, okay. Did you all get the draft recommendations? Yes. And Paul, are you able to uh, screen share with them? Sure can. So what I thought we would do is just try to make this kind of um, short and sweet meeting, which I'm sure you guys will absolutely appreciate as we've worked really hard at all our other meetings um, and thought we kind of go through each of these that we summarize and see if you guys had any thoughts, considerations, see if you thought they were appropriate. Um, and you know, kind of, kind of where we, we want to land on this. Um, so the first one that we talked about was the level of annual funding for the school construction um, CIP. Any thoughts around that? Does it seem an appropriate ask? It goes very, you know, much along what the county executive is, has asked for um, before and then tying it to CPI. And then this would be a um, this would be a legislative ask. So, does anyone have any thoughts, concerns about that? All right. Um, let's see. Um, we'll go first with uh, Mr. Donahue there. Um, Paul, hold like on a sec. Hold on, Alex. Paul, you might have to help me with the hand raising too, if you want. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. I'd be happy to defer um, to. Um, President Yoho. No, mine is just that I only just got to it because I only just got into the house and was able to get into my email. So I'm only just seeing this for the first time. Sure. If you guys want to take a second to read it, that's totally fine too.
Uh, I could make a quick comment. Um, sure. <clears throat> On the CPI, um, school construction costs have risen over the last 20 years, approximately three times the consumer price index. So I would recommend that um, a construction cost index be used for the purposes of identifying the annual inflation amount to be used in this function. That is not the CPI, which is a national breadbasket of all a lot of consumer costs, but instead a construction cost index. Um, and there are a couple ways to go about this. One is you could use the actual ado IAC adopted construction cost for each year, um, which is essentially a product of our analysis of the actual construction projects in the state over the previous year and so it is extremely maryland lea focused an alternative would be we could use regional construction cost uh, inflation numbers from a national source like turner construction cost index for mulins um, we could use you know an average of those we could use an average of those there's others skanska forella make uh for, they they publish construction cost uh numbers periodically. So there are all these uh, commercial index indices that are available for that. You could use an average of the IAC's uh, state adopted um, uh, amount and two national uh, construction cost indices or something like that. I mean, there's lots of ways to go about it, but I would just wanna make sure that it's clear that uh, to get something that will keep pace with construction cost inflation we need to use a construction cost index rather than the cpi um, and so uh, if you'd like me to take a look at some of those numbers uh, paul you and i could uh, put our heads together on on which index or mix could be perhaps uh, appropriate and then uh, provide that recommendation later i think it's, and we did we did talk about that and we did kind of struggle with that a little a little bit so um certainly especially in this area and with the high cost of living and everything here i think definitely bringing the state part into the formula certainly um and then i i kind of leaning toward averaging it but as you guys you guys know the best so if you guys are looking at it um yeah we'll we'll, we'll take a look and uh, bring back a, a recommendation. Okay. Does anyone else have Thank any you. questions? That's that's a great idea. Thank you. Anyone else great. have any questions, concerns about it? Janice. It's, it's Janice. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Do you want me? To, do you want me just to jump in? Because you, you can. can. We can try Sorry. to run it like our meetings. If it doesn't get crazy, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I would agree completely with Alex. I feel like. Um, the nice thing about using a Maryland number is that what is reflected in that number is reflected on how we build our schools. So certain, you know, like it's based on bids and actual bids and what's actually being put in Maryland schools, which is why there is an advantage to using a Maryland number. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay. Anyone else on number one? Okay. All right. And then moving on to um, number two, which where we, we talked a lot about this um, with the enrollment growth and the relocatable classrooms, the EGRC. Um, and I think our, we ended up with a takeaway recommendation that to um, ask the IAC to consider studying the current EGRC eligibility for funding criteria and allocation process to determine um, if any changes to their procedures were warranted. So that's kind of where we ended up at the last meeting with that. Is there any other thoughts or concerns or things, aspect we need to add on that one? Does everyone kind of, any concerns about it? Nope, so are we all good with that one? 
Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, moving on to number three, and I know there are some generalized concerns and some other concerns about this one, so we might have a little bit more discussion about it. Um, so this was the education educational special purpose local option sales tax um, that was modeled off of what Georgia did. Um, and of course, I am not usually someone who recommends uh, new taxes or raising taxes. Of course, the kind of thing I liked about this one is it did give the voters a say in where this was going and um, and it actually then lockboxed it to a specific purpose, um, which is, you know, funding our school uh, infrastructure. So those are the kind of reasons where, you know, I'm going back and forth or, you know, is this a recommendation that we want to move forward for consideration or do we just want to have it as a as a note in the report? So does anyone have any questions about this one or thoughts about this as we've looked at it? I think you can put it in as a note in the report, but I'm not going to support any hike. Yeah. Seeing that we went into a uh, session yep. where hikes are going to be, tax increases are going to be on the top of the menu. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. And people are really hurting right now. And I, I totally get it. And yeah, not um not a great there's not i don't think there's ever a great time to do it but certainly not now but again the only the piece i liked about it was get, i always i like the piece of giving voters a say i thought that was really interesting Look, to do it. The, my hesitation is also is that voters had a say before when we did casinos and mm. the legislature took it upon themselves to usurp the wishes of the voters and they took that money out and replaced it instead of supplementing the amount that was in the budget they replaced it with the casino money and that was yeah. not how that was supposed to be which has had a, a trickle a rippling effect across the state since that time and the lottery so right that's, wasn't... that's another concern that i had yes the lottery I'm, yep that, yes that'd be my concern also it would have to be a true lockbox which would be in addition to the current yes. you know, funding rate it can't be you know oh we got this money we're going to use it to fund it, but we're not giving any more money. That's my big concern. Yeah, hundred percent. Like like you guys have said, we've been down that well traveled road before. Sadly, uh, Miss Beagle, did you want to? Yeah. Well, I so I had a couple different thoughts about this. So, first of all, I got to tell you that the county executive and I talked about this extensively, and we would not support an additional tax on the residents in Frederick County. I mean, this is a Frederick County work group and we're looking yep. for solutions for frederick county we have increased taxes and lockboxed it for school construction in frederick county so we've already done in essence what this does you know what i'm saying if we're just looking at the frederick county piece if this was going to be an increase in the state sales tax that was going to raise additional revenue that was lockboxed for the iac to allocate through their process, in essence, raising money for the IAC. That's a different kind of thing. But the way that I'm reading this, as they did it in Georgia, is it's up to each county to decide yes. how they want to do this. And I got to say, we don't support doing that in Frederick County at this point, um, because our, our Frederick County residents are forward funding. We're already doing way more than our share. We've dedicated revenue specifically for aging schools. We have dedicated revenue for new school seats. I don't know how much more the residents in Frederick County should bite of this apple. And to me and the, to the county executive, it really comes down to the IAC needs to have more capacity to, to bond fund for more projects or have more funding so that they can make the state match to the matches that are out there in the counties. Yeah. And I 100% I agree with you, Janice. So should we leave it in the report that, because um, there doesn't seem to be, at least from those comments, my comments, um, does there seem to be um, consensus then 
to leave it in there that we considered it, but we do an we we can vote and on it. And if you know if it comes out as a no recommendation, then it comes out as a no recommendation. Do we leave it in there? I think that if we have a consensus that it's a no recommendation, that I mean, that it's a no. It's out of the report. Leave it out. That okay. would be me, but. That's for you to also relay as a part of this that this was the considerations that we gave. Right. Um, and then pass that message along. But if they want to do something on a statewide basis, that's for them to look further into. Right. Right. But ours is recommendations moving forward to try to help this, not okay. you know, what we shot down. Right. Right. Um, President Yoho, you got it? Yeah, I agree with Senator Fold and either it gets left out completely or it's put at the bottom with anything that we reject and with rationale as to why we rejected it. Okay. I like reject, just, reject with rationale. Okay. Yeah, and it's Janice again. I And I want to mm -hmm. just say I just left Brad who was on his way to another meeting, which is he apologized for not being able to be here tonight, but he has another commitment and you know we're all we're all trying our best but um we did talk about this and brad also didn't really support this because again the county council did make the com commitment yeah. to raise taxes uh specifically for the purposes of school construction and so i don't think that there's just any and i don't know if steve is on the call but uh he may be still trying to get back from work but um but uh, brad did not support this either so if you're if you're doing a head count Brad's yeah. not there either. In, in my head, I am. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Vice President uh, Gallagher, did you want to weigh in on this or Senator Young? Not necessarily. I mean, I think that um, if we are not moving it forward as a recommendation, that, you know, I don't necessarily think that there's any. Uh, real point in putting it in the, the report to, to move forward. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we'll, and we can, we'll have a draft report um, at the December meeting. And so we can talk about it, either it's reject with rationale or, um, or we just, or we leave it out. So, okay. Um, and then moving on to number four, um, that is the bonding um, capacity. Um, so this is a recommendation that the legislature requests um, that Governor Moore or Governor um, examine the debt affordability of uh, the MSA of the MSA and determine if additional bonding capacity exists to increase capital funding for school construction in the state. Um, so that would just be a legislative ask. So that would be our, a letter from us. Okay. Is any is are we good with that? Senator, Senator. I don't have a problem if you want to put that in there as an ask. As an ask, okay. All right. Senator well, Young. She, I don't know, she was traveling. I'm not sure if she's, okay. Oh, there she is. Hi. Um, Hi. Senator Young's on the phone next to me. You don't want him his opinion do you no oh i'm sorry <laughs> i could actually i mean you know <laughs> senator lewis young i'm so sorry <laughs> um yeah i mean i'm fine with writing a letter um sure okay okay um and then did you have any did you have any thoughts on the 
the reject with rationale of the other one, the educational spe special purpose local option sales tax? Um, I agree with a lot of the conversation, but somebody made a specific point. It was either Chair Yoho or um, Dennis Spiegel that said, yeah, we include it in the report as a footnote if we're going to include all of the um, items that we considered but decided not to put forward. So in other words, don't single that item out, but if we have a section that talks to other items considered and they're all in, then include this as well. And I think there's some benefit to that so that there's some documentation of all of the alternatives that were under examination. And that's, yeah, I, I agree with you on that, especially, I mean, another one I could think of that we talked a lot about was the P3s and then kind of where we landed with the P3s. So, yeah, I think there is something to be said for that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. And then number five um, was just where we were talking about, um, and I'm not sure, Paul, maybe you can kind of help with this one um, with all the dual enrollment and with all the aspects of, of CTC and how we do um, head counts and chair seat time and all of that. Do you or Alex, do you guys feel like there's a way, a benefit to looking at the high school utilization piece? Um, and how would we write that in the report? I'll defer to Paul on that because um, they are, um, this is a topic that requires a lot of detailed granular information uh, and it's more than I have at my fingertips. So I think it's best uh, for Paul to speak on that. Sure. So <clears throat> this is something we've um, already begun working on. So th the concept in and of itself doesn't uh, concern concern us. I think as, as Alex uh, mentioned, it, there this gets into a lot of granular detail because it, it almost requires looking at every student because even all students, as you talked about, uh, Delegate Miller, who would take dual enrollment, their placement um, either on campus or off campus is really different depending on their situation. So as an example, we may have dual enrollment uh, students uh, who are doing open campus and they're over uh, at FCC or they're doing an online FCC course and so they're not in the building. We may have other students who are doing uh, open campus and they're doing an online FCC course, but they need uh, the resources that we have available in our buildings and they may be doing it through a learning lab um, in, in our building, so we would still need capacity. So that's one of the areas that we're examining, especially, and it might be more important to us right now because we have high school 11 in our long-term plan that we re really want to ensure that the timing of that project really meets um, our, our need. And we don't want to build it too soon if there is um, capacity still available in our high schools because of things like uh, students off campus for CTE, uh, work uh, uh, internships, or uh, dual enrollment. I think Janice uh, raised her hand. Okay. I did. Thank you. Because uh, I always have something to say. Okay. So <laughs> the other thing that is not mentioned yet that everybody needs to keep in mind is that High school students' schedules change by semester. So just because the student isn't in the high school for one particular semester doesn't mean that that student isn't going to be in the high school for all of the other semesters. So I think that we need to be very careful of finding or expecting great savings from something like this. I mean, it, it, it looks to me like there will be a lot of work involved to try to come up with a common um, factor that each high school student would be that would be representative of the average student's seat time in a building 
and how much that will really save us compared to the way we count them now by teaching space. So I'm just not sure. I mean, I guess we could do a study and try to do something on a smaller scale, take like one grade or I don't know. But it just seems to me that um, although it may save us money in the long run, it is not going to solve our school construction problems in Frederick County and getting our buildings done faster. Because, yes, we have a lot of high schools that have to get done. Most of those are replacement schools. Right. No, but there's, I mean, we there's something to be said of trying to figure out ways to alleviate the problem faster, right? And in certain ways. And if one of the things that the blueprint does is that you have to show um, the money following the child. So there will be definitely with that more granular detail on where that student is and the program or the school that that student is. So could that be a way to measure or track um, as far as from a capacity issue? Um, but I am imagining, will they, I don't, I'm not sure if they'll have a dual enrollment track on them. Open campus they would because the money has to follow the student. Um, CTC they would, but I'm not sure about the dual enrollment piece. So I guess, um, Paul, is there any way you could find out if that is something that could be added to that piece to give us some, I don't, I don't know if that'll give us information. But Are you talking, you're talking about FCC on campus dual enrollment, not, yeah. not high school based dual enrollment. High school based dual, FCC open campus, they would be tracked from the blueprint because the money would have to follow the student. So that open campus, whereas the high school based, it would be at the high school. So, um, there still is a cost to FCC though. There, that money follows the student to FCC, even for right. dual enrollment on on F, uh, FCPS campuses. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so if I, I'm sorry, if I might just add a quick point on that. Um, to identify the reduction in load on high school buildings from students being off campus perhaps part of the time i think it might be possible to do a quantitative study of through master schedules in the high schools students off campus time and you might be able to do an analysis of the data from the student information system looking at student schedules to find out how many students are off campus for how much time on average, because it's going to change from semester to semester. I'm speaking as a former high school master scheduler, thinking back to how that all worked. <laughs> um, um, you can do an analysis from the data in the student information system if you want. Um, I would not jump to any conclusions at this point until you've done such a study, though, um, because that may not bear a huge amount of additional capacity fruit for another few years. Based okay. on what I know of just like the direction things are going with the blueprint, um, I think it's worth doing an analysis, but but I don't know that we'll get a whole lot um, of use e soon. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Alice. President Yoho, Karen? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And that's a great point. It not only is going to change from semester to semester, year to year, and if anything, one of the places we've already started to curtail the number of classes that we'll pay for because of money. Uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. know if that might not be an area that the legislature agrees or the AIB or whoever says, yeah, you can cut it back a little more. Everybody's looking for money and they're this is the main goal of MABE right now and Kazam. We're all trying to give advice to the AIB of how to make Blueprint affordable. And so I, if anything, I would say the number of courses may stay status quo now. If anything, it will cut. It will not expand at this point. And the other thing is, and maybe this is going to change, but my understanding was, and I, I know it talks about the money following the student, but those students at CTC all have a home school. That's where the money goes now. And I don't think that's changing. So 
they're in two different places but anyway so it yeah this one i don't think unfortunately it's even like our charter schools aside from sibyllisville uh, environmental school those kids come out in dribs and drabs that it just doesn't despite what they like to think it there's just no place that it really typically makes a big impact on any one particular school no I, uh, from the funding stand, i was just thinking of a way to track not necessarily the the money following but um no i like the the student information piece of it and no i don't think i think just looking at flexible flexible scheduling models i think it's very generic what we say um in there but just keeping those options open um as we're changing how school looks for kids i think is important um so maybe we just keep that very general and I mean, obviously, these are all just recommendations. If you want to, you know, do an analysis to, to see if there would be any help, especially at some of our most crowded high schools. Great. It's just the recommendations. So. Well, the other thing that I want to mention, too, along with space, not only at our high schools, but all of our schools, we have not implemented the career ladder part yet of the blueprint, mm. which calls for collaborative spaces for teacher master teachers to be able to work with mentor teachers and there's collaborative spaces and none of our buildings have been designed with those spaces in mind. So while we may have some savings in some areas, we're gonna have some other additional space needs in other areas. That's that's a good point. And I, I do think is, that would probably a good section to actually put in the report um, is concerns on future designations from the blueprint. Um, I think you bring up a really good point, Janice. And then like pre-K would go into that too then, right? Pre-K would go into that bucket of concerns on future spaces. If there's anything else you guys think of, um, let me know. And Senator Folden, that is completely not fair, bringing the cuteness factor into this meeting. <laughs> all right, um, all right, which, now which one, that's not, which one is this one? You gotta give us a name. Oh, this is Tootsie. Sounds like a Tootsie roll. <laughs> Tootsie, okay. So Tootsie has joined the meeting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, we are moving on to um, six and less. Does anyone have any other concerns about five at all? No, okay. All right, uh, moving on to number six, which is the CTE strategic facilities master plan. Um, and then Ms. Spiegel, did you want to speak on this one at all? Because that well, is something I can, the I can yeah i can just report that we don't have a problem sharing the report when the report comes out it's it won't be out for a while um we did meet on friday i don't know when we updated these uh, recommendations but we met on friday and selected one of the three vendors and so we're in the process of contacting that vendor and they're going to be giving us a proposal uh once we get their proposal and we see you know we'll go back and forth with that for a little bit and then it'll come to the county council um, and the county council will have to do a budget um, journal, like a budget allocation, because it's not budgeted yet, uh, depending on the timeline. You know, maybe that would happen during the budget process because we're getting darn close to the budget process um, or it would come in as a supplemental appropriation. So we're but we did select a vendor and um, we hopefully we'll be moving forward with that. But once uh, the vendor completes their work and we get a final report, we have no problem sharing that with the delegation. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Glad to see that moving forward. Um, any other thoughts on number six? Okay. Moving on to number seven. Um, that was the public private partnership um, piece. And again, I think um, talking about some of the, the things that we had talked about, the P3s and having some of that in the consideration to Senator Lewis Young's point. And um, I think that that is, that is a, a good way to at least summarize under maybe with bullet points, something along those lines, how we considered that. Um, any thoughts on the other recommendation about um, 
making a recommendation on other public private partnerships, continuing to look for them. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to add to that piece? May I uh, offer a couple of um, just non-substantive technical um, suggestions uh, by email on a little bit of the languaging in here, not not the re really the concepts, just a couple bits of languaging separately. Sure. Great, I'll send those. Thank you. Of course. I mean, I think we should leave it in there that we looked at it, that it's something to consider down the road, but right now, obviously, that's not something where we're going to want to go not with the, Right. And not with the P3s, but if there's any other, and which which they do all the time, is they look at public-private partnerships all the time. So yeah, sure. just continuing to look at it, but not the, that particular, the P3 model. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, President Yeho, you know Sorry, running a little slow. Yeah, and I just throwing out, as you say, we've done public-private partnerships. Uh, the Earth Space Science Lab, for instance, yep. with the teachers, the original teachers, they're having to help raise the funds. So, um, you know, just that was a very limited one kind of specific thing. Yep, yeah, I know. I think that's great. Um, and then... Um, and we talked a little bit about um, the leasing facilities for schools and what that would look like and um, commercial buildings and flexibility of the buildings. Um, so we landed uh, that the work group suggests FCPS consider conducting you know, an assessment of availability, commercial properties that could potentially be used um, as future school spaces, um, but evaluating factors such as location, structural integrity, and potential for customization to meet educational requirements. Um, is there any concern about just, you know, making the, rede the recommendation to kind of keep looking at different options now that that one is available? No, good. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't get my hand raised. So there, <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm just my internet's slow. Yeah, I guess my concern, and I'm just trying to watch out for staff. It says uh, FCPS consider conducting a thorough assessment of available Frederick County commercial prize. Who who in FCPS is going to do that? Does anybody have the expertise? Like that almost sounds like a commercial real estate person and. Like, does our staff have time? So I, I just don't know, like, the logistics, the time commitment, the, and and are they the best ones to to do that? That I just don't know about that part. Mr. Lebo? It, yeah, I certainly think, I mean, it would be managed through our facility services team. Uh, it's how we've acquired property recently for, you know, the, the future high school site. Uh, as well as the elementary site. And we, we typically do that in collaboration uh, with the, the county staff um, who involve a uh, commercial real estate uh, agent to support that, so. Okay, and that, and really it's amazing. mainly, it's mainly kind of on a need-based looking at it. It's not saying do a whole thing now, but that is an option to consider, especially as we're, hitting really overcrowded um, schools. And if there is that possibility, because now that possibility is more on the table now. That was my understanding. Is that- With a, lo a long-term lease, like you need With to have a long-term lease um, yeah. so that you could do that. You know, I think the other thing um, that I would want to put in here is that Obviously, the size of Frederick County schools would make leasing a facility challenging for like so, some schools. Like obviously, like a pre-K program, for example, to lease a, a building for a pre-K program that's going to only have pre-K. That is a different kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. to, to lease space for maybe some specialized CTC kind of programs, that's a different kind of thing. 
to mm -hmm. lease enough space to hold a traditional 1600 student high school would be challenging. And so um, I'm not sure. I think that we would want to have some, we always want to have the option available and we always want to keep our options open and we want to look at everything. And I feel like Paul and his staff do that naturally. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like we would need to have something on here that, you know, the intent is not to have to add more buildings that FCPS is responsible for maintaining because that's just going to compound the problems that we have now with funding to be able to support those buildings. Right. And I, and I think you're right. I mean, just, it's, it's another option that we have, especially with, with needing the space for the pre-k or with as you're looking at ctz that might be something that fits into what you're doing at the county so i just i think yeah leaving it in that it's a flexible option it's not certainly not a way that we're going to um kind of a right. preferred way of doing things right but it, yeah i mean i hear from people i hear from people all the time why don't you just like lease the mall and you know put up put a yeah. school in the, put a school in the mall well first of all no we don't own the mall <laughs> so right. that's the first right. problem second of all the person who owns the mall doesn't want to lease it to us but again it that will solve your problem for one school it's you know it i mean we have a bigger problem here in frederick county we're trying right. to get a lot of projects done that are, have a facility condition index where they're justified to get done and so um i'm not saying don't keep this in I'm just saying we need to qualify it that it is not a beat all end all and it is not going to solve our problem. Correct. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think any of the recommendations are be all end all um, at, at all, just because the need is so great, but it's taking steps to consider alternative things that maybe we haven't been thinking of before or we weren't allowed to do before. Right. So, um, and kind of thinking outside the, the proverbial box a little bit. Um, so, um, Jess, can you kind of help with some of the the language that you'd like to see that would reflect more? Yeah, yeah I'll work with Paul. We'll, fig we'll figure something out. I'll work with Paul. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Any other any other um, comments on? I think April just yeah, dropped off. She, yep, she just dropped for one second, so let's give her a minute to pop back in. Yeah. While she's coming in, I'll scroll to the next one. You guys are so much nicer than I am. I was going to say, well, that's the end of it. Thank you all. Senator, you're a member of the committee, not me. So that's your that is your call. Yeah, I know. I got to deal with her though. So we'll wait. But you know, I do think it is important that people do see it everything we recommended or looked at at least and not really recommended but we looked at it and i just think it's you know important for them to be able to look back and say, oh they did touch on this they did touch on that so. uh senator lewis young i think uh you're unmuted did you have a comment uh no i was gonna second senator Fulton's motion If only it was a motion. <laughs> Bipartisan agreement. <laughs> That's right. Do the work group want to talk about uh, number nine in case there was uh, until Delegate Miller gets back? That was a question on uh, inclusion of a recommendation to support tax incentives for financing new school construction to give developers of both commercial and residential uh, properties the opportunity um, to have tax incentives uh, to, to fund properties as they continue their development uh, throughout the county.
just as an update, April says she lost internet service, so she's trying to reconnect. So I'll, I'll ask my question. This is why I might put my hand up. So I have a question about this one and maybe somebody else from the committee can jump in. So were we looking for like the state to come up with tax wide incentives? Are we looking for the county to do that? Like I wasn't really quite sure or both like where, where were we landing on this one? It looks like based on the wording that it's both. I mean, that's how I read it, Frederick County and the state of Maryland. So it didn't look to me like it was one or the other, but both. I don't really see the state having an appetite right now um, for ideas that are going to reduce revenue sources. If anything, I think you're going to see an increase in revenue sources this year. So while I think it's an idea worthy of exploring, I'm not sure the timing is right. And I would almost have to look at the potential numbers to be able to support it. Like what kind of incentive would you have to provide in order to collect more revenue to or not collect more revenue what kind of incentive would you need to have in order to have uh, greater investments from developers who already uh, have certain obligations for school funding Well, I know in Frederick County, you know, a lot of the time um, we get proposals from different developers asking for us to waive uh, impact fees for some, uh, uh, you may remember a couple years ago, we were trying to build two schools at the same time and we had developers that were willing to float the bond interest for those developments um so that we could put the bonds forward quicker for those schools and we ended up not needing to do that because we were able to put the money in place but at the time they wanted to be credited their impact fees which you know is always an incentive however it's also the money that we use to build the capacity that we're adding in the first place so you're giving the incentive and hurting the ability to construct the project in the first place. Like we're limited to what we can can do what we can do. It's not saying that we can't come up with different incentives, but I'm just saying that that was an example um, where it's difficult to credit that impact fee uh, because then we don't have the financing to be able to construct the seat, the new seat, new capacity. Okay, just an update. April said she's blocked and unable to get back on. So, okay. If we want to, uh, I think she just joined. Again. I joined by phone. You I don't know what is going on with my internet, but it would not let me do it any which way. All right. Thank you. Sorry. What did I miss? Nothing. We waited patiently for you. Oh, you guys are so sweet. All right, um, so we're moving on to nine then, right? We did, and we had a brief conversation about that, uh, Delegate uh, Miller. Okay. So, Think Senator that's... Fulton, you did not wait for me, but anyway, go ahead. No, I asked him to take over. Thank you. There seemed to be another one, as I heard it, um, just so my notes are correct, that that's another one where we would include in the report, but probably not as a recommendation. Okay. All right, so, um, okay, and then the, um, and then number 10, that was where we were talking about the, is that the same excise tax increase, same kind of thing? Correct. <laughs> okay, so we got through them all? 
that's all of them. Yeah, okay. so are we going to see a revised update and then letter with any consideration if you want to do the footnotes for action items that were considered but ultimately decided against? Yes. Yeah, so like I said, I hope to have the, the draft format um, of the report of, you know, what we kind of want it to look like with recommendations, with considerations um, in, in part of it, and then all the accompanying uh, documentation that we've had presented at all the meetings, if that works for everyone. Is there anything else anyone would like to see added to the report or any other recommendations that um that we need to consider i just think it's important that you point out that you are one of three leas in the state that are going to be at 100 percent by 2029 and that's kind of why the work group came up um mm -hmm. because you know out of 24 there's there's three of you mm -hmm. would it be possible to see those rankings that are projected um, as a part of this report, I guess, to show that? Yeah, we can absolutely uh, share with the work group for inclusion the uh, projections for every district in the state uh, that we provided, um, the staff has provided to um, Commissioner Derenberg. And yeah, I'll send that over to, to uh, Paul. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Absolutely, certainly. I think it would be put it, yeah, for good for con very good for context. Uh, appendix or something mm -hmm. yeah as an appendix that'd be great sure mm -hmm. well and i would also i would also just mention too that um and because paul won't say it so i'll say it you know we really we talk about the capacity issues in frederick county because it is the thing that makes headlines we talk about it all the time the capacity capacity we're overcrowded we're overcrowded but really what gives us heartburn is maintaining the existing facilities that we have because we can't ignore it or we just dig the hole deeper. And so I think that every time we talk about capacity issues, we have to couple that with the aging facility issue. And it really is a two prong problem. And um, it hits Frederick County harder because of our overcrowding, but every LEA is dealing with, with aging facilities and, then, and they have to maintain their school portfolio. So I just, I, I don't want to lose that in the conversation because we really try very, very hard to balance it. Um, and it's difficult. And I think there needs, there does need to be a brief either summary or discussion of um, the other piece, some of the conversations and the concerns that came from our municipalities um you know definitely putting that piece in there and maybe janice maybe that can go along with that um as well under yeah that's, yeah, that's possible like the underlying concerns april it's karen uh yoho question mm -hmm. since i know you can't see if i raise my hand so no, you i can't you guys are gonna have to just go yeah um, when you mentioned the municipalities, there was, a, I re sort of vaguely remember some discussion on somehow putting some more accountability on the municipalities, and that doesn't seem to be in here. Yep. Nope, nope. That's exactly what I was thinking. You're exactly right. And then there was some, you know, there's even the, the piece about the, uh, you know, the juxtaposition of the affordable housing mandate versus um you know our capacity to build school instruction you know schools for instruction so you know there there's definitely that piece of it as well um i'm debating i guess is there any recommendations that we want that that we remember that came out of those discussions i'm trying to think of what section i would call that to put that under
I mean, we invited municipalities to have a discussion. So, I mean, you could make it as a, if I'm understanding what you're asking, but make it a subcontext within stating that um, what the discussion was and what their points were made. And Okay. So, like, put it under a... I mean, there was, the, if know, I remember impact. correctly, I mean, didn't somebody even talk about the, like, their ability to have their own taxing authority or something for to, for their schools and, and that for their that they feed from. So I mean, there was discussion about that. I think it's important to put that in there, but obviously, I don't think it's something that <laughs> as an action item you want to move forward with right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely think, um, and I can do, we can do a summarized discussion points either from the minutes or um, the, that we'll put, it, put in the report. Mm -hmm. You just put it in the, where we were talking about at the, uh, at the end of the report, different items that we yep. were consideration. This was one that was brought forward. There was a discussion about it, you know, different mayors or burgesses came forward. We had this discussion and, and I think it's important to include that in there, that that was something yeah. researched, but ultimately not something that we're ready to move forward with at this moment. Right. Yeah, and I would agree, because yeah. I think that uh -huh. several of them also talked about their desire to be more collaborative, too, with each other and with the county in establishing uh -huh. their parameters for, you know, evaluating development and, and as those things were, you know, um, coming up, I think several of the mayors and Burgesses were interested in having that collaborative approach. So I agree. I think it should be included as its own yeah. section um, because we did okay. spend a significant amount of time talking about that. And we know that some of the municipal growth affects the school system more than others. So I think it's worth putting it in there. Okay. And then some of them were asking for support too, not just collaboration, but the, and then how, how can we support them? You know, um, okay. All right, excellent. There's one other it... item I'd like to mm -hmm. include in the report, either in the executive summary, the conclusion, um, however it's being organized. And that is that I've been incredibly impressed by the amount of work that FCPS has done already. Uh, during our very early meetings when we were throwing out ideas. And then after that, uh, both Paul Lebo and Janice gave some presentations and they showed us how many of the ideas that we brought forward initially or we talked about as best practices around the nation had been examined already, and many of them several years ago. Um, so I believe that both FCPS and RBOE deserve a lot of credit for really being on top of these issues, particularly given the financial constraints we face and the rapid growth we've experienced in our county. So I'd like to acknowledge that. Absolutely, you know, 100%. That's what I planned on starting with, like you said, some kind of executive summary about why we're doing it, um, you know, why we did the work group, the purpose, intent, all of that. And then that's where I was going to st start, just like we did through our meetings, would start with the foundation um, and in not just the, the good work on, from the Board of Ed and FCPS, but also from um, the county and how much the county has put in and the way they forward funded and that we're just kind of at a breaking point with that. Um, that we, and not only that, but the maintenance that we've tried and we're, we're, you know, we're here tonight because we are at a break, you know, getting to be a breaking point. So I think you're, you're completely right. Um, so would you, would you want to see sign a, some kind of like summary of the way they talked about it? um like just kind of bullet points um and then have i was going to include all the company documentation of course in like an uh, appendix 
I think probably Janice and Paul are the best people to help you, but um, they could give you a summary of all the things that we talked about, brainstormed, that already had been examined. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Janice and Paul, is that too much of an ask? Are you guys, is that, and Alex, I mean, you guys were all three part of that. No, I think we can do that. Okay. Yeah, we can okay. do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it's really your, you know, also the chance to, to I mean, really showcase the amazing work you guys have really been doing. Um, so. Yeah, that would be the first step, and then you can have the section on the municipalities, and then um, and the needs there, um, the recommendations, the things that we discussed, the things that we're we're interested in going forward with, and why, and then the um, then things that we talked about, but really weren't interested in moving forward. Um, so, what is it, what do we say? Reject with rationale or just not interested in moving forward with at this point um, and the rationale. And then all the accompanying documentation that we've um, had and been given publicly. Does that sound, is there any other thing anyone would like to see in it, in the report? No? That okay. sounds complete to me. Okay, and then I will I will do a check in with the other members that couldn't be here and kind of get their thoughts on it. Um, and then, like I said, we'll try to have the rough draft. Um, does December seventh uh, does that give you guys enough time to like even just like a rough draft kind of thing, or do we need more time to go to? Because December seventh was what we decided on, wasn't it? Am I wrong about that date? No, that's was it the? That's a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I think we had it. We were trying to get it for the final delegation meeting. Yes, the seventh is our final delegation meeting, um, so that we could bring that to them. So, would we be able to do something on the fifth, or we can? Let me see. Um, did, I, I thought we picked another date. Was it the we, 5th or the 12th? We had the 5th on the calendar. We, we do have the 5th on the calendar. Okay. All right. The 5th on the calendar, um, 6 p.m., doing it virtually if we need to. Because, yes, we would like to have something for the 7th is our delegation meeting. So my question is, is that going to be achievable for Dr. Lebo with the, and Janice with their scheduled duties? And if it's not, I mean, this is with the holidays coming up, it's something that we can yep. obviously move to one of the first, you know, if we can't have it for the fifth, I know you want it for the seventh. However, if we can't get it then, obviously we can get a final uh, draft ready, at least for our first delegation meeting going in the session. Because we're not, there's no, this is going to be the report. There's no voting. Point. Yeah, there's no, yeah. So yeah. I would just... I'm going to defer to them, but I know your holidays, busy family, all that coming up. I want to give some consideration for that too. Yeah. Well, there's that, and I also work in the budget office, and our first budget public hearing is coming up on the fourth. So I'm pretty tied up between Ooh. now and then. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think that if we can get something kind of crafted up together, I would say by like January first, so that we have it going in the session for our first delegation meeting that we meet as a team, as a you know an entire delegation to present, and then move forward. That would be my, that just with everything that's going on. I think that would be reasonable if that's doable. I I agree. In fact, our December seventh meeting has been positioned as a listening session for citizens. So it's unlikely that this would really fit into the agenda anyway. So I think it's a good idea to postpone it until later um, when we're actually back in session, maybe our first or second meeting. 
Okay. If you guys are comfortable with that, then um, I might be able to just individually circulate the rough draft and maybe get some thoughts that way as we go through the month. Well, yeah, April, I was going to ask, like, isn't the legislation written that you have to get back to the leadership with this report in December? Or is, yep. do you? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, it is. Can so you, that's give, them, gonna, can you wanna... give the leadership the report before you take it to the rest of the delegation? Like, how's that work, really? Really, I would assume. Um, like... the, the delegation doesn't approve this. This is from this group, this group that was co collectively put together. We put our input in. We had an active investment into this process. Um, the delegation, I mean, I'm not missing their input, but this was not something that they were a part of, an integral part of. So we can give it to them as a courtesy, but it's not necessary. So right, we can do exactly what thinking. you're saying, Janice. Right. And I, but I was thinking more giving it to, we have to give it to um, leadership. We have to give it to the Senate president and um, the speaker. Um, so I was thinking more along the lines of if we have to vote as a, as a group on the final report or the final this, recommendations, that's kind of where I was getting to. Yeah. I mean, it's by the end of this year. I mean, Paul just put up a, the, the note there. So, it's just us giving what this work group found. It's our findings. It's not for the um, legislative action of the, the delegation. So I, I think that we can report it if we wanted to do it the week after Christmas and when everybody's off. I mean, I'm not trying to put it, you know, on everybody's time, but it, it, this is not a priority with their budget stuff coming up. This is something that we put the work in. Now you put the pen to paper. And then we can put something out in the middle of December, uh, right before the holiday, if that's workable. Janice, it really is your guys. Uh, yeah, it's your guys' call yeah. on, on what you guys can think. But Especially to yeah, add in the points that Senator Lewis Sheldon wanted to add that you guys had already, yeah. you know, considered. I think that those are important elements as well. So knowing that you have the budget stuff coming up, if that's amenable, we have till December 31st. So. And we don't need the delegation to move this forward. It's us as a group. Yeah, yeah I think if we, I, yeah, I just think, I'm just thinking like next week is going to be, next week and the week after are tough, but I certainly think by the following week, we'd be ready to have something out. So what do you think, Paul? I agree that that's a much more reasonable time frame. So what about the okay. have something the week leading up before Christmas or let's speak before like somewhere around there? I'm just trying to give you time and you know recognize that we're coming up on the holidays with your families. Yeah, it's like kind of in a like would the twelfth be good or the nineteenth? Because the nineteenth gets close to that Christmas holiday. So I would say I would say do it the nineteenth. That way they got two weeks after their budget stuff is ready and that gives them plenty of time, hopefully. That would be great from for my lens. Yeah, because then we still have 12 days to everybody put their final little tweaks on it and we shuttle it, you know, shuffle it out from there. Okay. That, okay. that works for me. Janice, right, that works. Good. Okay. Yep, All that right. works. Um, will everyone be able to do a check in either on the 19th or. Um, just trying just, to let's just try to we, plan on everybody doing a zoom at the minimum on the 19th let's just all a call, to try a to zoom do that. on the 19th okay yeah and and have all something right. crafted up prior to that meeting for everybody to have input on. sorry okay. <laughs> sorry all right so 12 19 six o'clock again does that work for the majority of us here Everyone's nodding their heads, it looks like. <laughs> yes, it works. We keep forgetting that you can't see us, April. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Janice. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. So we'll try the 19th, the 6th, we'll try to get as we're looking at different sections. And Kira is, um, you know, very willing to help, of course, with whatever you need um, to start keeping track of the document, whatever makes it easier for you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
<laughs> so, okay. And was there any um, any other <laughs> member remarks about anything we talked about? No, but I'm going to just tell you, you're missing all the dogs. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's more dogs? Dang it! <laughs> Pixie's up on the Darn screen it. now. And Karen Yoho just put hers. <laughs> this is Maisie. <laughs> oh, this is the best meeting ever. That's crazy. I'm Mine, are asleep. Mine are asleep in the back seat. Oh, wow. oh, oh. That's awesome. Um, okay, so we already set the date and time. Was there, and we don't really need any future agenda topics because um, the report will be it. Um, is there anybody on from the public on here other than the pup? There are a couple members of the public. Uh, if anybody's okay. interested in public comment, if you could raise your hand and we have two minutes. Uh, Mr. Boki, you have to help me out. Yep, Mr. Boki, uh, time is yours. I, I can be closer to 20 seconds. Just want to uh, thank the work group for your continued discussion and work and uh, Appreciate the insights. So, and everyone have a happy Thanksgiving ahead. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I don't see any other hands raised. All right. Well, I will echo that. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. Um, thank you for all you know the work everyone's put into this and, and your thoughts. I really appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you being here. And look at us. It's only it, we would have been done less than an hour if I had not had technical difficulties. So, <laughs> so I appreciate you could only see my shocked face, April, that you had. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of famous for them. Yeah, <laughs> you are. Hey, I've actually done. Now you know why I wanted in-person meetings. So Thank you all for your input. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful holiday. Bye, everybody. All right. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks.